Leonardo da Vinci's trees are lifelike. Nizan's trees are abstract. The trees da Vinci laid down on canvas led him to the Mona Lisa smile. And that enigmatic smile became the subject of a modern Chinese artist. Join us in exploring the different ideals and goals of Eastern and Western art. This tree represents the most essential spirit of Western art. It was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. This tree is more ideological and was painted by Chinese artist Ni Zan. Through the comparison of the two trees, we can understand the Western artistic spirit. In the Louvre Museum, Da Vinci's tree was transformed into an enigmatic smile. On the evening of February the 11th, 2009, the Mona Lisa was waiting for a Chinese artist. Chinese-French painter Yan Pei Ming's art collection, The Funeral of the Mona Lisa, was about to open here. Yeah. Gracias. 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 Artists like Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot, Salvador Dali, Marcel Duchamp, and countless other people of different times have had their own understanding of the Mona Lisa. The exhibition, Funeral of the Mona Lisa, was held at the Salon de Nantes in the Louvre. It was the first time these modern artworks relating to the Mona Lisa had come so close to the Mona Lisa herself. In fact, just 30 meters away. The Mona Lisa, seen in black and white, clearly bears features of Eastern paintings. These days, the painting is greatly appreciated by Westerners. Yet 400 years ago, things were quite different. In 1601, several Italians came to China. They were members of the Society of Jesus in China, led by Matteo Ricci, president of the society. That same year, three Western paintings, all carefully chosen by Matteo Ricci himself, were presented to Emperor Wan Li of China. Ricci hoped the emperor would be amazed by the ingenious Western painting techniques and would support his missionary work. To his disappointment, however, except for the painting of Jesus, which he thought looked like a living Buddha, the emperor showed no interest in the Western paintings. Feeling puzzled, Matteo Ricci wrote in his notes, the Chinese paintings look two-dimensional since they lay no emphasis on lighting and shadow. The artists do not understand the art of oil painting and the laws of perspective so their paintings look lifeless, and they only use the color black when painting. Ricci did not see much value in these non-realistic Chinese paintings. As a Westerner like da Vinci, Matteo Ricci had encountered conflict between different artistic ideas.
It is human nature to pursue truth, which is greatly valued in Western paintings, especially during the period of the Renaissance. Leonardo da Vinci repeatedly mentioned the word mirror in his manuscripts. He once said, the mind of the painter should be like a mirror, which always takes the color of the thing that it reflects, and which is filled by as many images as there are things placed before it. Yet in China, the goal of art is not merely to pursue the truth. For Emperor Wan Li of the Ming Dynasty, whom Matteo Ricci hoped to meet, the art of painting was not merely intended as a vehicle for the precise depiction of nature. It was said that since the 7th century, Chinese artists had been trying to transcend the limitations of nature in pursuit of a higher level of beauty, which lay in the expression of the artist's inner feelings through brushwork. Perhaps they sought to transcend the material world and attain harmony with the universe. An unconventional and free painting style gradually took shape. Among the paintings of this style, the most highly esteemed are the paintings of Ni Zan. Ni Zan, a Yuan dynasty painting master, considered the goal of painting to express one's inner feelings, rather than the precise depiction of things. Throughout his life, he tried to pursue the truth of things beneath their seemingly simple appearance. At dawn, the Louvre enjoys a little peace before the rush of tourists. Venus is bathed in the first rays of the morning sun. The dress of the goddess of victory seems to flutter gently in the morning wind. The Mona Lisa's gaze upon us remains mysterious and deep, as always. They are the most valued treasures of the Louvre. The first two are Greek works. Among them, the Mona Lisa alone is an Italian painting, created over 500 years ago. For the Joconde, we have chosen really this room, which is the plus grande, for the reasons of the public en fait. Euh, normalement, les tableaux de, de Léonard de Vinci sont dans une autre partie, un peu plus loin, dans la Grande Galerie. Mais pour accueillir le plus de public, euh, pour cette star qui est euh, Mona Lisa, on a décidé de, de l'accrocher ici. Each year, over 7 million visitors come to see the Mona Lisa. Outside the exhibition hall of the Mona Lisa, many of the greatest paintings of the Renaissance period are displayed together in the famous Grand Gallery. Ici, on est vraiment au centre de la, de la Grande Galerie. C'est vraiment euh, le centre du musée. C'est dans cet endroit-là qu'on a vraiment décidé de créer le musée du Louvre. C'est le lieu le plus célèbre euh, de tout le palais euh, du Louvre.
During the early period of the Renaissance, as well as revitalizing the classic culture of Greece and Rome, people pursued higher ideals, like the liberation of human nature and the promotion of science and rational thinking. The world entered a new era through the years of the Renaissance. Giotto di Bodone, Paolo Uccello, Donatello, Antonio Manetti, and Filippo Brunelleschi. The brilliant chapters of the Renaissance continued generation after generation. This is St. Francis by Giotto di Bondone, on display just inside the entrance of the Grand Gallery. After the Middle Ages, Giotto brought reality into paintings once again, laying foundations for the pursuit of reality during the Renaissance. His paintings are both faithful expressions of human feelings and precise depictions of forms and structures. He was the first Renaissance painter. Hot on the heels of Giotto's works, Sandro Botticelli led the Renaissance spirit in another direction. In his paintings, reality is revealed through lines in a detailed and profound way. The characters look mysterious and graceful, longing for the release of their emotions. This is key to the Renaissance spirit, the liberation of human nature. Leonardo da Vinci inherited the spirit of expressing human nature and made it infinite and eternal under the guidance of science. In 1452, in Anzio village, in the town of Vinci, in the Florence suburbs, an old man wrote, On Saturday, April the 15th, at 3 o'clock in the morning, my grandson was born. He is called Leonardo. Leonardo da Vinci spent his childhood in a peaceful village, surrounded by olive trees. 51 years later, his name was to become associated forever with the name of a woman, Mona Lisa. How did his childhood experiences in a small town affect his observation of the human spirit and body? As time passed by, his paintings provided vague inspiration to a Chinese artist's creation in the Louvre. This effect Mona Lisa, Da Vinci's Mona Lisa, like like a London painting, London painting a photo, like a movie, a photo, like 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 a Perhaps, as a Chinese artist, Yan found it hard to put aside his preference for ink and wash paintings. There's a small memorial museum in Wuxi, Jiangsu province. During the off-season, only the administrator goes in and out of this place. It is dedicated to the memory of Ni Zan, the great Chinese painter.
Nizan was born in Wuxi in the winter of 1301. Born into a rich family, Ni was obsessed with neatness. His clothes had to be perfumed with a special fragrance before he wore them. The trees in front of his house were frequently cleaned under Ni's orders and finally died from being overwatered. But although he had many eccentricities, Ni was highly respected. How did he earn the admiration and respect of people over hundreds of years? Ni's paintings often depict bamboo, trees and rocks with distant hills and close pavilions. This painting, Pavilion and Trees in Autumn, depicts the autumnal scenery along the Taihu Lake in Wuxi. The rippling lake and serene mountains appear in the background. The sky is clear, without any clouds. In the foreground, a thatched cottage stands on a soil slope, dotted with three trees. The trees in the painting look as if they're growing from the mountain rocks, with no roots. Some people said the bamboo he drew looked like weeds, but Ni didn't care. When talking about painting, Ni often said, I love painting bamboo, for through it I can express my feelings. It does not matter whether it looks real or not. What Ni drew was not bamboo as it appears in nature, but that which was within his heart. Though his brush strokes seem very casual, they demonstrate the spirit of bamboo. Delicate, straight and thin, but also strong and tenacious. These trees reveal the ultimate pursuit of Chinese art, the expression of one's feelings. Unlike the trees painted by Ni Zan, the trees painted by Da Vinci were lifelike. Leonardo da Vinci carried out research into the growth rhythm of tree trunks and the structure of branches and leaves. This was in accordance with the scientific spirit of the Renaissance. This tree comes from Leonardo da Vinci's unfinished oil painting, Adoration of the Magi. To gain a rational perception of the real world and accurately express it, one first has to observe the real world. Leonardo da Vinci left many precious manuscripts for posterity. They are like today's research notes. The twist of every single leaf represents a series of accurate calculations using numbers and angles. It is perhaps more accurate to say that da Vinci was carrying out research as much as he was painting. In the research of trees, one can cut either transversely or longitudinally. Research into the human structure is much more complicated. On the back of this one euro coin, there is a famous diagram of human proportions. It's based on the Vitruvian Man, drawn by da Vinci in 1490. At the end of the Milan Plague, many corpses lay unclaimed. Perhaps this is what made da Vinci's research on the human body possible. To obtain a true and perfect knowledge of the vascular system, I have dissected more than 10 human bodies destroying all the other members and removing the very minutest particles of the flesh by which these veins are surrounded. In his manuscripts of anatomical studies, Leonardo repeatedly analyzed twisting human arms. These observations were eventually transformed into an understanding of the movements of bones and muscles and a formula of motion and strength. A good painter has two main objects to paint, man and the intention of his soul.
The former is easy, the latter hard, as he has to represent it by the attitude and movement of the limbs. Leonardo da Vinci put a lot of effort into depicting the Mona Lisa's hands. Someone once commented that it was the most beautiful right hand in the world, and a glimpse of her smile will leave a mark on our memory forever. Why do people smile? This was one of da Vinci's research topics too. In answering the question, the mere understanding of human structure is not enough. One also has to learn about its mechanics. The stretching, contraction and relaxation of which muscles forms different smiles. What makes the Mona Lisa smile so special? It took da Vinci five years of preparation and meticulous study to complete the Mona Lisa. He demonstrated the shape of life through his scientific studies. Yet in traditional Chinese painting, one has to escape the leash of shape to express real life. Pavilion and trees in autumn was drawn by Ni Zan in his old age. The inscription on it means, on a rainy day, July the 6th, I made this painting and wrote this poem as a gift to my friends. After the wind and rain had stopped, it felt a little cold in the evening. There were two trees standing close to the window. When I took out the brush and tried to copy their beauty, a pair of white cranes suddenly flew across the sky. It seems that Ni Zan painted in a very different way to Da Vinci. Inspired by his feelings, Ni infused his understanding of life and nature into his paintings. The painting process of pavilion and trees in autumn was free and unshackled. Mountains and lakes became lines and contours. Ni painted scenery to express his feelings. Yet the scenery behind the Mona Lisa prompted heated discussion among those who saw it. Where is the scenery used in this particular painting? Why is it so lifelike? In order for Renaissance painters to make the scenery blend into their paintings, they had to create a seemingly continuous space, which it seems we can reach into, or even walk into. A lifelike world is created when the impression of space is created. To achieve this, they applied the laws of perspective to their paintings. The laws of perspective are in accordance with the perception of the human eye. The nearer an object is, the larger it looks. All the lines meet at a certain point in the distance. The lines stretching towards the meeting point create an illusion of space. Artists from the Netherlands invented the aerial or atmospheric perspective, based on linear perspective. To the viewer's eye, nearby objects look clear and distant objects look blurry. 
Da Vinci used this method when painting the background of the Mona Lisa, creating a foggy effect. The background scenery looks indistinct, with fuzzy colors, arousing people's imagination. The scenery he painted might not have existed, yet it was in accordance with the natural laws of the material world. In addition, da Vinci also inherited and developed the use of light and shade in paintings. The combination of light and shade creates the impression of three dimensions, without harsh borderlines. The development of this technique was a major turning point in the history of Western art. The charm of the Mona Lisa smile lies not only in da Vinci's painting technique, but in the essence of Western culture during the Renaissance, the fruit of the tree of the human spirit. What is the world? To da Vinci, the answer lay in the realm of science, for in that era, art equaled science. In 1487, the 35-year-old da Vinci drew the blueprint of the world's first aircraft. During his lifetime, he had designed many machines and weapons, including diving equipment, bicycles, tanks, machine guns, and helicopters. But, due to the limitations of science, many of his designs were not built until modern times. His historic achievements in the world of invention are unmatched. In Nee's painting, these mountains look serene. The simple lines leave much to the imagination. As for the lake, it was painted with even fewer lines. Nee left much blank space to illustrate the waters of the lake in his heart. For the painters of that era, Mountains and water had their own expressions, sometimes smiling, sometimes angry, and sometimes quiet. It depended on people's perception. With ink and brushes, artists transferred their own perceptions onto the thin paper. In Chinese landscape painting, the color black is used as shade to show distance. Despite the absence of laws of perspective, they still created a sense of distance. Nizan deliberately used the same shade of black when painting. His use of shade was not confined to the distance or appearance of things. Yet, if you try to feel his paintings with your heart, you can perhaps feel a sense of serenity. Nee spent the last 20 years of his life living on a boat, roaming around Taihu Lake. He was immersed in nature's beauty. It was said that Emperor Qianlong of the Qing Dynasty loved the painting Pavilion and Trees in Autumn very much, considering it a peerless masterpiece. His stamps of appraisal can be seen on it. Adored by later emperors and scholars, the painting was kept in the Forbidden City as a treasure. Meanwhile, at another palace, King Francois I of France bought the Mona Lisa and put it in the Louvre in 1564. Since then, it has remained one of the Louvre's best-known treasures. 
on a énormément écrit sur ce, sur ce tableau-là. Et pourtant, encore aujourd'hui, il y a des découvertes à faire, malgré cette célébrité de, ces, de, de toutes ces investigations. On a pu prouver que, euh, confirmer encore, je dirais que la Mona Lisa était bien le tableau qui euh, avait été volé en 1911. Euh, qui a été, ce qui est aussi très intéressant, c'est que toutes ces analyses...我画莫娜丽莎还是歌颂性呢还是还是在一种沉重的心情因为这个对对莫娜丽莎挑战也是对整个文艺复兴时期的一个挑战嘛是一个纪念性的孩子来一个葬礼有人陪伴着有人可以
。哦，我是想做一个纯粹的艺术家。When talking about art, sometimes we will judge a certain kind of art by the standard of another. In fact, art itself has different forms, representing different paths. Each form is irreplaceable. They will bring out the best from each other when put together. Painters of the Renaissance expressed human nature in a scientific and rational way. The pursuit of truth led Western culture to another peak, from the Greek period to the Renaissance. Yet for Chinese painters, the expression of their inner feelings and perceptions is always more important than their precise depiction of objects. Through the two palaces, we see differences in the aims of Western art and Eastern art. The differences help human culture grow, both in richness and abundance. Rembrandt's carcass of beef marked an important transition point in Western art in the 17th century. While in China, Bada Shanren's birds and rocks fully demonstrated Chinese artistic conception. Born in the same period but with different cultural backgrounds, how did they project their feelings in their paintings? i 